question for you would be you talk about a sizzle reel right i don't know if that's the industry lingo i'm just mm -hmm. going off of mm -hmm. what i've heard you say mm -hmm. for a sizzle reel to be effective what would you suggest its length be understood okay cool so yeah well let me take a step back and say i i love it i love the the concept and i love the angle because i think that that's more important than the sizzle reel right like it don't matter if you have a sizzle on something that's trash it's not going to work so i think first and foremost i like the concept i like the angle um i like the light uh the light kind of touch and the light take on something that otherwise is pretty taboo um, I also think that in order for television to work, one thing I noticed, especially unscripted television, which is what we're talking about, um, there needs to be, uh, a reveal moment, right? Like the, the reason that shark tank does so well is because there's, it, it leads up to a finite yes or no. The reason that bar rescue works so well is because, you know, they go through the process da, 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 and then there's a, a moment, a single moment when they enter and, you know, they're, they're blown away. That was a little harder to do on hustle because we, you know, we kind of made it based on like each individual business had one thing they were leading up to. Uh, but on your sh show, um, that moment is very clear. It's the, you know, when they, yeah, when they know, see when themselves. They, correct. So I, I think format wise, it's there. Um, and then you being a character is going to be a big part of the success of this thing what's going on you just like a lot of personality so i think you got all those pieces in place um as far as a sizzle itself um a sizzle really only needs to be a few minutes long and a sizzle um just needs to be able to uh um kind of encapsulate what the show is going to be about it doesn't need to be a full pilot episode in my opinion it just needs to be a little little sampler you know so so the sizzle usually if you package it up, should be able to lead you to uh, a network, let's say, going for um, and buying a full pilot episode, let's say. In your case, what you're proposing essentially is, you know, doing a few episodes on your own. So, right, because you're going to be recording a number of the clients and stuff. Correct. Yes. Right. So what I like for you is I like the idea of you recording those and then kind of making those like little mini episodes and just kind of going live straight to YouTube um, and seeing what kind of initial support and attention you can kind of get from those. Um, but yeah, a sizzle, if you wanted to focus on the TV route, right? A sizzle is just taking a few highlight moments, a few like, oh, you know, just like, it's a, it's usually high emotion, like snippy cuts. Yo, what's up, we're at the Bronx, you know, like spray paint. It's just it, they call it a sizzle because it replicates the effect of when something's on the on the sizzle sizzling. Right, right, guys. You never know something crackles, pops, not you know. So I want it to be a high thing, engaging, blah blah blah, and and usually you'll have your voiceover over it. Hey, what's up? This is Dave Santiago, and welcome to Bam Bam Blang in this show. Bam Bam Bam. You know what I'm saying? And it's really just like an intro where you just get people saying like, "Yo, that would be a hot show." You know? So, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. if you really wanted to just strictly pursue the, the TV angle, then maybe you actually, maybe you don't publish those episodes live on YouTube um, because then they're going to look at the views and if they're not popping, then they're going to say, oh, well, I don't know. So for me, it's either you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do an entire season one on YouTube first. And then you do yeah. that, which I personally, I really like because that puts the momentum in your hands and in your control. Um, whereas if you wanted to just strictly pursue the TV angle, then I wouldn't put any of them on YouTube. I would film all that stuff just to get the sizzle reel. And then you start shopping the sizzle reel around to different networks. And the thing that's a little frustrating about this part, and I'm just going to be you know, up front with you so you can take it for what it is, is it's a long process, right? I went from the first email that I got about the show to um, when we finally were on air, it was about two and a half years. Wow. And, and so it's a long process. Got you. And the only thing that kept, that fulfilled my media itch, you know, uh, like fulfilled was the fact that I was vlogging. I was still, uh, the way I approached media was like, yo, 
I'm going to, I'm going to do my thing on media with or without anyone. And, and I, so I like that for you too, right? Like just you're putting, you're still putting out content and you're just kind of doing your thing. Cause you never know if the TV is going to pop off. And so in the meanwhile, instead of waiting two years and not producing any content, you're producing content, you're dropping the episodes, you're dropping the episodes and you also have it as a sizzle reel and you're shopping it around to see if it can get picked up. But I don't want that to be the reason that you don't do content. Does that make sense? No, no, absolutely. It does. And, and let me just backtrack a little bit. So like the main focus wasn't um getting on tv so okay okay for me was one the, the whole purpose of me even of even producing this is is answering the the, the what who how so mm -hmm. i rather the instead of the the client you know hitting me up or, or the assistant like oh what is it like what's my first session going to be like what do you mm. do what does it involve what's the discomfort like now Mm. instead of me just coming on and going like hey how are you doing my name is david santiago i'm a hair loss practitioner blah 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 give him the whole spiel uh -huh. this is what's going to be involved when you come see me for the first session uh -huh. now i'm going to give you a show mm. that's going to have everything where we're going to strategically all right well on this show we're going to talk about this guy who has scalp psoriasis this is what we did for him mm. this guy wants his hairline brought down he's got a nice hairline he thinks it's too high he wants to push down mm. can we do it and at the same time, we're going to ask the client that's going to be reporting, what was the discomfort like? What was the process like? How did mm -hmm. it feel? Put that together mm -hmm. and then put that out on YouTube. So now all these answers, all these questions are answered for the client. Mm. But it also gets to show me and exactly. my style. And then when I thought about that, I was like, you know, why, why am I thinking so small? You know, it was kind of mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I'm going to have the content there. I might as well put this together and try and take it to the next level. Understood. At the mean, you know, you know, it's kind of like, let me fight this two front war. You know, I'm not just going to go one way and then just forget about this. And right, the reason right, I even right, came right, up with it right. was every client always brings someone, you know, for like that support because they just, they think they're going to go through this like excruciating pain. It's like, oh my God, it's a tattoo. It is, but it's not like a traditional tattoo. You know, the, the technique mm -hmm. is much more comforting. You experience mm -hmm. some discomfort. You know what I mean? So like a traditional tattoo, mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm tatted up. I'm sleeved up. It's like a mm -hmm. tan. You know, this is like a two or three. So okay, got you. there has never been one client who had a, uh, a family member or a friend there that when they see their friend's reaction, that they mm -hmm. look at me and they go, bro, how are you not recording this? Like, right, right, right. right. This is what you need. Like, mm. I've had dudes, and you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't elaborate who, because some of these dudes be bringing me consent forms that are like fucking 15, yeah, 20 pages yeah. long. That's like, nah, you ain't gonna blow me up that I came here to get a hairline. And, <laughs> yo, these are, <laughs> it's crazy. You would appreciate it because you're a hip hop head too. So, like, yo, oh, these are cats. Oh, don't tell me that. Nah, no, <laughs> these are, you know, like, these are cats that, you know, we hear them rapping about some shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You, you gonna get lumped up if you say this, that, the third. Right, 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 now, right. Now, you know, I do the final reveal. Here you go. And they see it. And they're like, you know, they turn around. They're emotional. They're hugging me. And they're like, you don't know what this is going to do for my career. My wow. confidence. So, like, everyone is like, bro, this is what people need to see. So, after mm. hearing that mm. for almost three years, it was kind of like, yo, you're being real stupid right now. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I you got need, you. And you need to capture this. And I know what it's like to to go through a moment, especially when you're content minded and you're like, fuck, I should have I should have had that on. Oh, dude. So the, the best possible thing that you can do is just start as soon as you can so that you start having as many reactions as you can. And I appreciate that additional context, too, because now I understand it's not like you backed into, hey, I want to be on TV is you started here and then you did the progression and you're like, oh, this could end up here. So Correct. that gives me more color. And then that leads me to say, hey, go live on YouTube for the clients that are OK with it. You going going live with it. The reason I think it's great just to go live on YouTube. A, it's a great it's a standalone. It's a strong standalone piece of content on its own, this series. But then also B, like you said, this is a lead gen tool. This is a lead generation tool. And it's also uh, it's essentially like your frequently asked questions. It's your your FAQ in a video. Exactly. In, in, in an entertaining piece of content. Right. So, and that's what so, I want. 
Correct. And that's these that, people that will be sharing goal. this on the low with each other. Like, yo, check this shit out. Right. Exactly. So mm-hmm. this is like people don't see the 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 bomb that's about to be dropped. And, yep. and why I call it a bomb and which is another reason why I wanted to just not put this complete thing as a podcast, but just chop up little pieces where I feel, OK, this is good to put out where they don't mm-hmm. know what's going on. The reality of it is it's the hair loss industry. Right? It's a predominantly white industry all mm. right and i'm a latino mm-hmm. and as you know you know sometimes there's certain plates they want us to eat off and mm-hmm. they don't that's one the second thing is the service that i offer is the only guaranteed hair loss solution that exists right now mm. so you talking about i'm going up against and, and i don't have a college degree mm-hmm. you know i got one year at Pace University and 13 years of the United States Marine Corps under me. You know what I mean? So I'm a hustler. And if you fuck with me, I know how to kill you several different ways. <laughs> but <laughs> the whole point is I'm going up against dudes that have put in a lot of time in their education, a lot of money. Sure. And they have it's, it's a surgery that they offer. And we all know with any surgery, there are no guarantees. Right. Where with my shit, it's non-surgical. You're talking about somebody could come during a lunch break, mm-hmm. get it done, go back to work, mm-hmm. and no one's going to be like, yo, what the fuck did you do? They're going to be like, oh, you know, you got a little irritation, mm-hmm. you know, and, you, and nothing that, nothing crazy. So, you know, I, I'm up against that. And then the next thing is this kind of content doesn't exist because nobody in the hair loss industry is really trying to put out there what it is that they're doing because they want to feel so secretive like they, yep. everyone thinks they got the secret sauce when it's kind of like no you don't like yep. there's no secret to it. I, it no it's clear to me and i i wouldn't say that you're up you're up against that i would say that they're up against you right now because that's a hundred percent like you flipping that on his head um, like that's the reason why we were able to build so much brand at Harlem Capital, let's say, because, you know, financing is another one of these types of industries where just the status quo has been to be really obscure, you know, and, and you don't want additional scrutiny. So you lay low and, you know, you just keep it close to chest and we flipped it on his head and we're very transparent and we would vlog our meetings and all this other stuff. And you saw the type of groundswell that that shit created. I think you have the same exact opportunity here. You know, where you, you, I think the closest thing you have is a uh, keep, uh, keeps, is it keeps or Roman or one, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you got keeps, so, uh, Bosley and stuff. So like they that, have that, they have that friendly type of vibe, but they're not producing content around the experience because, no. because of the product that they have doesn't lend itself to content. So I think you could be that dude in this category and single handedly take it over for real. And I appreciate that. Thank you. And you know, it's, I've interviewed. In, in the podcast, like I've spoken to people of significance in within those companies, mm-hmm. and a lot of them have told me just in the podcast alone was like, "Bro, you're a motherfucker," because <laughs> you know we were thinking about this shit. We were like, "No one has a podcast where it just talks about hair loss." Like if they do, it's very uh, it's targeted. So it's like, okay, you only offer Scott Michael pigmentation. This is what we're talking about. Like in my right. podcast, I'm interviewing people that offer scalp micropigmentation, people that offer cranial prosthesis, uh, hair transplant surgeons. Mm. So once I started talking to the doctors, they were mm-hmm. the ones that were like, bro, what the fuck are you doing right now? Mm-hmm. I'm on to you. You know, it's mm. like, I'm on to you because you talking with everyone from every industry and you're about to develop some serious network, which I have. Mm-hmm. And, and it's crazy when I look at the podcast, it's like, yo, they're listening to me in fucking France, fucking Iraq. Damn. Greece, and these are people listening like, on the low, on right? The low. Like, on the they're low. They're not giving me exactly. the props. Exactly. Because they don't even want, a lot of people the... don't even want to be known that they're, yeah, so they're just they listening want... discreetly. Yeah, it's so, interesting, bro. Yo, it's, it's wild. And I'm like, you know, I, I know I know that the demographics have to, to play with it, but I'm like, it's cool. But I'm putting it out there. You're mm-hmm. listening. Like, you know I'm putting out mm-hmm. some shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so like, I want to drop, I want to drop that bomb because we got the Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas in the industry. Mm-hmm. That's, that we know amongst ourselves. 
Understood. But not everyone knows. So, right. know, I want to be that. I want to be that Kendrick Lamar mm -hmm. that comes out and they're like, "Oh shit!" Secret weapon. Yeah. Like exactly. You know yep. what I mean? Um. So that's pretty much where I'm at with it. And um, I know what I have in front of me. I just wanted to get a little confirmation because you've been on that side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do anything different, man. This is one of those few sessions where I listen and, um, you know, you're, you intuitively, I can tell, kind of understand, you know, you're, you're very content. I don't know how long you've been doing it, but y you have those, those intrinsic understanding of like the value of it, A, but also B, how to go about it. And you know, just the fact that you're not honing in on just your individual profession within hair loss, that you have a bunch of these and you're building brand equity and you're becoming that voice. And then you realize that you got to take it to video and kind of deploy it that way. And yes, I would go YouTube. And then over time, that will lead to, let's say, a TV show if you want it to. But I like how you're just going to start just kind of on your own and it's going to pop and you're going to get a, a, um, a wave from that. And I wouldn't change anything, man. I don't know if you're doing little bits of micro content. I would just, if you're not, I would introduce that into your arsenal. Because yeah, those, I do, you do audio. Okay. I do audiograms. I do anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just put like a picture and it's got like the little audio wave, kind of like what you've been putting out. With for the your, uh, yep. But I, I put a picture, you know, associated with whoever the individual I'm talking to. Understood. And I'll so put that out. That's it, man. And, and you know, I don't know how much of your personal storytelling you do. Like, yo, I was in the Marine Corps. I'm this and that. I'm actually a college dropout. This is, I'm a Latino. I'm sleeved up. If you're not doing any of that, I would in start introducing that into the mix because then you're going from, hey, this is a guy who knows a lot about this stuff to, hey, I actually fuck with this guy because I feel like I know him. Right. And that's, that's the point where I have my audience with me where it's like, I don't just, I mean, I do mostly just talk about business, but just over the years, I've also shared so much about my stuff that there's like a deep emotional resonance with my audience. And, you know, it's like we know each other already. And that's that's going to naturally shine from you in, in some of the video pieces um, that when you start dropping them. And so that will just make sure you fully have it on lock because then people know you. They know you're an expert and they feel like they know, you know, who you are and kind of why you're doing it, how you got there. So I wouldn't change a thing, man. I think you got well, it on lock. I think it's so just it's, it's comforting execution. to hear that because in my script, what I got planned out and like the con the, the content that I want to put out, the substance, mm -hmm. I want to talk about me, my come up, so mm -hmm. that people understand, like, you know, this is this is the average Joe Schmo. Exactly right, right. And he's doing it. Mm -hmm. And especially for the veterans that are like, you know, I did my time, I'm out, I don't got shit to do, that's mm. it. You know, without the military, I'm nothing. And it's kind of like, nah, dog. We could do it. And then mm. you got the barbers that are like, oh, I cut hair and that's all I could do. Like, there's no real growth in barbering. It's like, bullshit. Like, right. I'm going from a $30 haircut to a $1,500 to a $3,500 procedure mm. because of my barbering background. So mm. I know that that's there. Like I said, you know, hearing that is like, all right, I'm You got go. it, bro. It's the, same, it's the same way, by on. the way. It's the same way that I was able to resonate with, you know, Dominicans who come from the Heights who feel like there's nothing for them. And the same way, that's why I also lead and, and open about like being a college dropout. I, you know, hit that angle. And so the same, like, those are the foundations of my audience today. Now, everyone who follows me isn't necessarily in either of those buckets. You know, who knows where they come from, but th you're thinking about it the right way. You're building that core resonance, barber community, veteran community, hair loss community. Right, Eventually right. they intertwine and it just starts creating this like, super tight bedrock of an audience and once you get it to a certain point then when you start throwing little bits of micro content like you'll see i drop content 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 and you never know which one pops but every once in a while one yeah, of them pops, one that hits. Whoop, spikes and you're like i struck a chord there and it just brings a new influx of people boom right in that funnel and then you're just nurturing them with more and more content and then you pop again at some point. And, and then that's just how it keeps happening in waves. And then that's how you end up with a TV show. Like, I didn't even know that shit was in the cards for me, to be honest. It yeah. just, I was just doing my thing. And it just that's came as a result. And I rode that wave and it elevated my profile. And, you know, what it did was, you know, it elevated my speaking fee as well. I think before then I was charging 3500 for a talk. 
you know, now I'm at 10, 15 K per talk. And that's for one hour that's beautiful. and pre pre COVID I was doing four a month. Right. So then you tell me now I have, bro, it used to take me, I used to make 30 K a year just being a doorman. Now I can make that in three hours on stage. Right. And that's the same thing that's in the cars for you, by the way, because you have such a specific niche that you're dominating. So eventually as your profile grows, you will also be invited. Yo, we're looking for someone to sit on a panel. You know, the, you know, we don't have a crazy, crazy budget. We got 1500 and we'll cover your flight and lodge. Okay, bet I'm with it. You go, you record it, you put it out and then your speaking career will grow. Eventually, if you want to pursue the TV deal, it'll be there for you. If you want to do a book deal where, by the way, the cash advance on a book deal for a first time nonfiction author is probably like 75 K. So now you're getting a cash advance. You can write the book if you want, or you could pay a ghostwriter from right, the same right. cash advance. So you don't nice. even have to come out of pocket for it, but you get uh, you get the royalties. Boom. Then you got that stream. And then you, before you know it, you start you create a, you know, a barbershop franchise or you franchise the model itself. You know, you, you trademark the practice and the brand and then you create a franchise model. And now you're collecting royalties from a bunch of these. But, you know, which, what I'm saying which like, that is the end goal for, right. for what I got. You know, so scout solution. So bro, you could easily flip this into a few M's yeah, uh, yeah. from from this hustle. That, so that's I, that's the goal, man. And, and when you talk about with the talking, like with the podcast, like it's introduced. So this is my this was my second time going around with the podcast. At first, I didn't know how to manage my time. So I was mm -hmm. just like, I'm getting my hand in everything. I was just like hungry. And I was like, I'm not going to put an excuse for nothing. Any and every mm -hmm. opportunity, I'm, I'm fucking taking it. But I didn't learn how to properly manage time which was weird because i'm a marine that's what we do mm -hmm. like we take shit and we make sure we have like the perfect battle plan before we do anything are you are you um do you wake up like right on time every time like it, bro five o'clock bro five o'clock four thirty i'm like charged wow. up or that's four awesome. hours of sleep and i've been i've been retired since 2000 fucking 14 bro Wow, wow, and wow. I'm and you still have that hardwired yeah. in So you. by 8 o'clock, while motherfuckers is waking up, I'm like, yo, I did my edit podcast. I did this, this, boom, boom, boom. What's good? It. Let me go take my kids to school. I love it. I love like it. That. Um, yeah, I'm very That's awesome, man. Yo, I I respect respect and commend you, man, for, uh, Thank you. for all the shit that you're doing, man. It's incredible. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Which brings me to the next thing, right? And this is why I didn't want to put this out there like that. And I respectfully ask, whatever you're going to use is yeah. this portion. So I have one thing that I am prideful for, but given today's fucking economy and just everything that's going on, this has held me back. And I want to ask you, do you think this is something that I should even put out there? So I'm also a police officer, mm -hmm. All right? So I'm, I'm a police officer full time, but I'm up north. So I'm in Putnam County. So I work mm -hmm. three days out of the week. So that still gives me four days to oh, you hustle. You do 12, 12 hours a day, three days a week? Yeah, I do 12 hour and 20 minute shifts. So mm -hmm. I work three days every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And then I got the rest of the week to hustle. But when Ooh. I come out from my, when I come out at night, since it's morning time, I always get like a client or two win. If I could sleep four hours, that's all I need. So, you know, I still hustle Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Don't get it twisted. Like... <laughs> I just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a beast. I'm a small business. I'm trying to grow it to it, you know, so I know I got to put in work. So my thing with this is, bro, I'm from the South Bronx. I grew up being harassed. Mm -hmm. I know what it is to be thrown in a fucking cop car, be called a fucking spig, a piece of shit, all that. So when I saw the opportunity, when I first came back from Iraq, I was like, what's there for me? Mm -hmm. No one was taking me because I uh, originally I was a computer science major. So to everyone else, it was like, this kid's a ticking time bomb. 21 years old, he's already experienced war. We don't want him. So I saw, you know, I met the feet there. Stop school. And I went to the next best thing that was easy for me to transfer my skills over, right? I needed another paramilitary organization. So I became a police officer. Something to me, which was like, you know what? I could be part of the problem. I could be a solution. So it's like, you know what? If I'm going to put this uniform on, I'm going to make sure I represent it correctly. And I've conducted myself the way I would have wanted when motherfuckers used to harass me coming mm -hmm. out of 301 East 156 Street, fucking Jackson mm -hmm. Projects. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be part of the solution. And I know that I am now. I I don't have many worries because I know I'm a good cop. I know I'm one of those dudes that, yo, all right, here you go, dad, get the fuck out of here. Don't worry about it. Just this is not the place. I'm one of those guys. 
but we got all this shit going on now. I, I, I like I said, I've had magazines like, yo, what you're doing is fucking amazing. We got to get an article on you. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And they'll call me and I'm at work and they hear the radio and they're like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, I forgot to, you know, I'm a New York State police officer. And they're like, oh, okay, hold on. Give us one second. We'll give you a call back, bro. Five minutes later, I get an email. We're no longer, you know, want to do business. We're not looking to promote blah, blah, blah. Like off the grip, like because I'm a cop and I've had clients who have, come to do a, a consultation and I'm, I'm always caring because sometimes these dudes pay me with cash. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful because, you know, goons, goons are everywhere. Goons are going to be goons. Mm-hmm. Um, they've seen, which I no longer do. I don't know, carry the big boy with me. So they kind of like saw that. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, relax. I'm not some fucking hood booger here just doing tattoos. Like I'm a professional, but I'm also a police officer. And then like right then and there, like they'll never come back. And I've hit them up. Like, I've had my sister hit them up and they'll be like, no, I ain't fucking with no cop, fuck them, just that boom, boom, boom. In a nutshell, the question is, do you think it's smart for me to take that part of my life and not push that out there, especially with what's going on in today's day and age? Ooh, what a question, man. Yeah, Um, and I knew I was going to fuck you up with that one. That's why I (laughs) I actually wrote that one down in my notes here, like, because I'm a good cop, bro. Anyone that has know know me, anyone that has interacted with me, like I've always ended it with a like, yo, thank you. Um, it's it's uh that's a personal one. Um like I can only answer from my view of the situation. I personally know in my life that I've taken things that um I man, you know how it is. You make lem you know, you make lemonade out of lemons. Um, I personally love the idea of working it in to the story somehow, but I understand, you know, I understand how it could have some real repercussions, um, on your safety and maybe even the business. Um, but you know, I don't know what's, what your heart is telling you, but, um, if there's ever an opportunity where we, you know, that people would welcome hearing from cops that are, you know, doing the right thing and standing up for the right issues. It's now. And, you know, I feel like, you know, it's my, it's not my decision to make for you, but I almost feel like maybe this moment was meant to happen for me to get up in your ear and say, yo, you know, the worst that comes out of it is you have a, uh, you know, a few clients that say, yo, I'm not fucking with it, but the best that comes out of it, is you know you can humanize the force and you can humanize people wearing the badges and um and start to create a little bit of a bridge it's not necessarily your responsibility to take on per se right but um if you just so feel it you know and it's in your heart to do that might be you never know where that takes you bro you know the downside i feel like is limited but the upside i feel like it's immense yeah and you and you can start creating some healing around that and i agree and and i'm glad you came at it that way because i wasn't gonna like whatever you said i was just gonna go okay like if you were like nah i don't do that it's gonna fuck you up i was gonna be like all right cool but like i i genuinely feel the same way too Mm -hmm. where it's kind of like yo you know right now this is what they need to hear and see like Mm -hmm. Because I know how I interact with my clients. I'm not going to do this shit because the camera's on. Like, this is right. me. But I also mm-hmm. want to let them know, like, you know, I, I'm a fucking human. I'm not a robot. You right. Know, I've gone from a robot mode and now I came into this paramilitary organization. But this is who I am. You know, this is how I interact with the community. This is how I interact with my people. And 90% of my, 90, 95% of my clientele, you know, some Latino. You know what I mean? So, like, I need them to see that you know i need them to see i dap I, yo what's good homie right right you know and, like and and you're I'm a product you know, of my environment yeah and and it's part of your story man and you know anytime you get into a situation where you're like conveniently leaving out a certain part of your story it, start, it almost it doesn't it feels like a lie in in a sense that you know yeah. you're admitting the truth right um so it's, if that's just who you are bro that's who you are and so I'm a big fan of it personally. I've taken things that I've gone through that might have been considered, you know, embarrassing. Like, not that being a cop's embarrassing, but I understand with the times. Um, like, for instance, I, I had to, you know, I had to pawn my Rolex at some point. You know, I've also I've been evicted from my house, and like those are things that business people 
wouldn't lead with or wouldn't share because you know it, it affects the way someone might see you but that's yeah, just yeah. my it's just where it's just the reality where you know what has happened to me in the course of trying to get after it and so you'll see that the moments where you're the most vulnerable and exposed you also have the equal and reciprocal opportunity to like touch people the most because they're like because they know they can sense that that took balls to share let's say so so i think i don't know man i think it's big bro i think yeah, yeah. i you know i have a piece where i talk about it mm -hmm. that i did like about three weeks ago before this really got how are we on time bro i don't want to we're good we got a couple minutes and then i got about um, you know where i spoke about it and I, I talked about my come up why i became a police officer my experience sitting in the back of a car them calling me a spick you know, an Italian guy and a Dominican guy calling me a spig, this, that. Oh, we arrest pieces of shit from here all the time. And I'm like, here I am, 18 years old, come from Pace University. I worked in a museum. I got a knife that we use, specialized, to open the artwork. I'm telling them that. I'm on my way to leave to the Marines, and this is how they were talking. Mm. And I got emotional, which was crazy. Like, I got emotional talking about it because it's like, you know, this is not who I am. This is why I became a police officer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like even the videographer, like this motherfucker was like, yo, nigga, you making me cry. Like what the <laughs> fuck? Like what this? So he like stopped it and he's like, yo, this is why. Like I never knew this about you. He was like, but this is great. But then, you know, we got to the times where we at now. And it's kind of, and I'm not so much worried about my safety because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just not worried about it. Like I have that, you know, I, I, I legit am a good dude. And I believe that God doesn't allow that kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. to happen to people like me. <clears throat> so I, I do have content like that, but I did want to put it. I just wanted to, you know, from your perspective, what, what yeah, yeah. you are. Nah, right, that's my no take, more. man. I think, listen, man, I think you got it. You got it. You got it, bro. This is just one of those sessions where it was more so just to connect and maybe bounce ideas off what you got it. You got the strategy on the business side, the content strategy down and, you know, and, um, and I think you have an important social role to play at this particular moment. And it's important for us to kind of lend our voice however we can. You know, I'm doing the best I can and so forth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. But um, this is great, man. Yo, you got my personal email. That that email that I sent to schedule, that's my actual personal line. So I, will, I would love to uh, keep tabs on this as it develops and as it grows. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, and, and, you know, and as you put the content out, I'm happy to share it and just, you know, do what I can. Now. Yeah, that'll be yeah, dope. Sure that I'll, I'll tag me you on some stuff there, here and there. You know, I'm yeah, yeah. bombard you and shit. I know you get, uh, I know the deal. I'm starting to get it on the hair nah, nah, nah. On the hairloads, yeah, everybody's yeah, like, yeah. yo, I can't do that for you, man. I'm still trying right, to do right, right. me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it, man. But, yo, thank you for your service. Uh, I appreciate it. And be safe out there, man. I know it's crazy times. Cool. So, but thank you, all man. in all, man, it was great to connect, Be safe, too, man. Be well and tag me on anything that you post. Dope. All right, my brother. Be safe, man. Peace, man. You too. Peace.